Hey yeah, awesome guys, welcome back to another Mr. Mr. Ballin reaction and this one is it's actually was it was literally posted like an hour ago. So if you haven't, please check his video out video out first because obviously I'd want you to support him after watching my video because obviously if you've not seen this video because it is quite an early reaction he won't he won't get that that extra view or whatever and it does help so I mean yeah please just click his video watch it through even though you've maybe seen my reaction through watch his video through and whilst you're doing something else I'd appreciate that but we're going to get into um obviously a new reaction of his first of the new year his first post of the new year and the video is someone in this photo has an evil secret and I mean, yeah, that's pretty much it. We're just gonna jump into this. Hopefully you're going to enjoy. Um, and yeah, let's just check this out. Fair warning, the ending to this story is very abrupt and very upsetting. But before we get into today's story, if you're a fan of the strange, dark, and mysterious delivered in story form, what's this way of asking to like the right this time. place because that's all we do, and we upload once or twice every week. So if that's of interest to you, please offer to curl the like button's hair for their wedding, but then repeatedly touch the top of their ear with the curling iron. Also, please subscribe to our channel and turn on all notifications so you don't miss any of our weekly uploads. All right, let's get into today's story. Strongsville, Ohio used to be just another typical quiet American suburb. Nice homes, nice families, nice restaurants, and a mall. But in late 2017, a discovery was made in Strongsville that put this town on the map in the worst way possible. To understand this discovery, we need to go back to early 2016 when this town's nightmare began. In early 2016, two longtime Strongsville residents, Bruce and Melinda Pleskovic, received some very exciting news. Their 20-year-old daughter named Anna and her 20-year-old fiance named Jeff had just told them they were expecting a baby, a baby girl. And so Bruce and Melinda were totally excited about the prospect of finally becoming grandparents. But at the same time, they knew Anna and Jeff did not have very much money. Anna still lived at home with Bruce and Melinda. She did have a job, but she made very little money. She was a waitress at a local Applebee's restaurant. And as for Jeff, he had a better job working as a service technician for a heating and air company, but he didn't have enough money to support him and Anna. In fact, he didn't even have enough money to move out of his parents' home. He was still living with oh, them shit. on the other side of Strongsville. And so this couple, they're really excited about their baby, but Bruce and Melinda are thinking, you know, we really got to find a way to support them because struggles, they're just not uh, prepared. Struggle, the struggles of being a young parent, man. Honestly, <clears throat> whenever it happens to me, I just hope I'm prepared and I'm, I'm going to make sure I'm not going to do it young because, bro, I want to get myself settled. I don't want to have some, like, something in place so then I can just be comfortable and not have to worry about whatever it is, man. But... Yeah, being a young parent is tough, man. Very tough. Especially when they're both working. Her boyfriend's, like he said, got a decent like, level job. He's getting good money. And he still would struggle. So it just goes to show, man. But yeah, this is going to take a dark term. I wonder if it like relates to this or if it's going to sort of be related to something else. This first child. And so Bruce and Melinda, they talked it over and they decided the best way to support this young couple was to tell their daughter if she wanted to, she could invite Jeff to come stay at their house. That way the two of them okay. could be together and once they had their daughter, Bruce and Melinda could be the great grandparents and help take care of the baby. And in That'd general, helpful, this would allow sure. the couple to just continue to save money and move out when they were ready. And so when they- Boy, I wish I, I would have had those options if, so if I was in the same situation, because that's a very good situation to be in, man. A very good situation. You have your parents who are offering to do that for you in what I assume is a nice house, nice neighborhood, whatever it is. That would be the dream. If you're stuck in that situation and you've got parents offering you that, count yourself very lucky, told man. Anna they were willing to do this. Anna was so happy, she was so grateful. She called Jeff and Jeff was equally happy and grateful and said, yes, I would love to move in with you guys. So it took several months, but finally in June of 2016, which was the same month that Jeff and Anna welcomed their daughter to the world, Jeff would leave his parents' home and move into Bruce and Melinda's home. And almost immediately after he moved in, he and the rest of Anna's family 
began experiencing some very strange and disturbing things around their property. Just a few days after Jeff had moved in, he and Anna were home alone. They were on the main floor of the house and they were having dinner at the kitchen table. And at some point, Jeff just happened to glance out one of the back windows that looked out into their backyard. And now this property had this huge sprawling backyard. Basically, they had all these houses kind of in a row and they all had almost like a communal backyard, this big open space. And so Jeff is looking out into this huge backyard and he sees off in the distance something strange. He doesn't really know what he's looking at because it's nighttime, it's dark, but he stands up and he walks over to the window and as he's looking out, he sees way off on the backside of their property are these four strangers just standing there appearing to be smoking something and they're just kind of looking up at the Pleskovic house. And so Jeff is looking out the window at these four, not really sure what to make of them. And he calls Anna over. And so Anna walks over and the two of them are looking out, not really sure what to do. I mean, on the one hand, these four people who they clearly didn't know or they believed they didn't know were definitely trespassing. But at the same time, they weren't really doing anything. They were just kind of standing there smoking. But as they're watching these four people... Could be weird, but I guess they're not breaking laws like he's saying. But if I was in this situation, oh man, I don't know how. I would feel. One of them begins walking up the property towards their home. That's a and then weird ass picture, man. I don't like that. Pleskovic trampoline, which was in their backyard. And this person begins fiddling with the trampoline. And so at this, Anna's like, you know what? I don't know what they're doing. I feel totally uncomfortable. And so Anna would actually call the police. And so the police, they come out, but by the I time the squad car arrived in front of the Pleskovic house, the four people in back must have seen the car and they took off running. And so when the police officer went in the backyard and looked around, there was no one there. And there was also no sign they were there. There was no dropped cigarette butts or anything. They just kind of vanished. And so the police officer told Jeff and Anna, if they come back, you know, let us know. And so the officer left. And then a little while later, when Bruce and Melinda came home, Jeff and Anna would tell them about what happened. And they would agree that that was totally strange, that in all the decades they had lived in Strongsville, they had never had anybody stroll onto their property and just loiter in the middle of the night. And so for the next couple of days, the family was definitely on edge but after a little while this whole incident was largely forgotten about fast forward about five months to november five 2016 months. and anna was home alone with her young daughter and she's playing with her daughter on the first floor of the house towards the front of the house and as she's playing with her daughter she suddenly hears what sounds like someone trying to open the back sliding glass door on the back of the house and oh so instinctively my. anna thinks okay you know jeff must be out there or my parents must be out there and they don't have a key or something and so she scoops up her daughter and she begins walking towards the back of the house to open this door for them and when she walks into one of the back rooms before she reaches the back door she happens to look out one of the windows that looked out into the backyard and standing right oh up this the fucking picture man oh my god Oh, this fucking picture! ...is this unknown male figure with his face pressed up against the glass. And so fucking Anna man. just freezes and stares at this guy, and then this guy, he notices Anna, and he ducks down out of view. And now Anna's thinking to herself, this is the guy, he must have been trying to break in my back door, I'm home alone, I don't know what's going on here, oh I don't know if he's going to try to break in again. And so she just turns and runs back towards the front of the house, she runs upstairs, she goes in a bedroom, she locks the door, and she calls the police. But by the time the police come out there and they look around, they can't find this unknown figure that was at the back of the house. And there's no sign of an attempted forced oh entry. My days, and so unfortunately man. they told her, look, you know, I'm sure this was very traumatic for you, but there's really nothing we can Imagine, do. Imagine, yeah, so they, there was no traces of the first people. I don't know if it's gonna be linked. The way he sort of spoke about it, I assume it may be linked, the first group of people. Now this, this case, where this man's standing at her window, like, Surely the police would see that, and maybe they'll just have someone being able to monitor you. I don't know if they'd have a f that that would be possible or what, but like, for me, I'm seeing that, and it's, there's a link to it, man. There's a, like, I don't know, but I don't know, maybe not. But like, the parents who've lived there for however long they've lived there, they said they didn't experience anything like that before, and now they've had this within the space of a few months, like near each other, happening both times. Like, it's very sus, and again, being in that situation where someone's there and you're home alone. 
God damn, it must be scary. Here, there's no evidence Honestly. to suggest who did this. And so please just, you know, keep your house locked. And if you see anybody suspicious on your property, call us back. And so naturally, after the police left and Anna had a chance to contact Jeff and her parents. Imagine how scared you would be when the police leave. Parents, they were horrified and they rushed home to comfort her. And then after the initial shock of this incident had worn off, the family began to speculate, you know, do you think this might be connected to those four strangers we saw on our go. property a few months ago? It just seems odd that those two things would happen so close together. And then the family began to think, okay, well then, who is this person? Who are these people? What do they want? Why are they targeting us? What's going on? Because as it was, the Pleskovic family, they didn't have any enemies, at least none that they knew of. If anything, the people of Strongsville adored this family, especially Melinda, the mother. For the past 20 plus years, she had been a middle school teacher in town and her students adored her. She was also a big time soccer coach in the community because she oh, had shit. played in college and she was still very passionate about it. So she was this amazing coach. And in the eyes of many parents in the Strongsville community, Melinda was a bit of an inspiration because she was not only the mother to Anna, she was also the mother of an 18 year old boy named Kyle who had Down syndrome and was nonverbal. And Melinda just had this unbelievable way with him where she was so good to him. She incorporated him in everything. She got him so involved. She gave him the best life he could possibly so have. So she was just an all round good person, man. The type of person that just like, you know, you just have those. You just have those people where, like, they just can't really do a thing wrong, and everyone just adores them. Like you said, everyone loves them. Everyone enjoys their company, etc. I hope. Oh my god! I wonder who. I wonder what's gonna happen to like whoever in this house man because it's obviously i don't know if it's gonna be the whole family or what but it's just gonna get so dark and so anytime you saw kyle with his mother kyle would be all smiles even though kyle couldn't speak it was so obvious his mother made him incredibly happy but regardless of the reason for these strangers to be lurking around their property the Pleskovic family was now totally on edge and found themselves constantly looking out the windows, especially at night, in fear these strangers were going to come back and might try to break in again. And unfortunately, these strangers would come back. In January of 2017, so two months Not after that Anna ago. saw that unknown figure at the window and heard the back door sliding around, <coughs> Bruce's car was broken into. It was sitting oh, in the shit. driveway of their property. Someone got inside of it and stole his laptop. And so Bruce, he calls the police and he says, you know, I've got to believe this has to do with the people that are harassing my family. And the police believed him and they began looking around and asking around, but they could never track down the laptop or the thief. And so once again, the family was kind of left on their own. And the police said, look, you know, if you see anything else, let us know, but there's not much we can do here. A few months later in July of that year, Anna, Jeff, and their daughter were all home together one night when Anna happened to look out one of the back windows on their first floor and out on the very back of the property were three strangers just standing. Bro, these pitch to scare me, man. They saw those four strangers smoking the year before. And these three strangers are just standing there looking up at the house. And so horrified, Anna calls out to Jeff and says, look, there are three people in the back of our property. And so Anna, she pulls out her phone and she's calling the police. And as she's calling the police, Jeff, who's totally upset that there are these people harassing him and his family and making them feel unsafe, he just grabs a flashlight and storms out the back door to go confront these people. But as soon as Jeff went out the back door, before he could even shine the light on them, the three people had turned and ran and vanished. And so finally, when the police did show up, they were aware of all the calls they had gotten from this family. And so they went out there and they did a serious search for these three strangers, but like always, nothing was found. And so the family once again was told, God. If you see anything else, let us know. The following serious, month, which was man? August, Anna was home with her daughter, along with her mother, who was upstairs. And as Anna is in the front of the house in the playroom with her daughter, she hears the sound of somebody trying to open that back sliding door. And now immediately her radar is up because she knows what happened the last time she heard the sound. There was that person in the window. But she's thinking, okay, I can't just immediately call the police. I need to at least look and see if there's someone that I know at the back door. 
And so she scoops her daughter up, she stands up, and she walks around to the edge of the room she's in, and she kind of peeks her head down this oh, hallway this that will give her a, a clear view up. of this backsliding glass door. And once she finally has a full view of whoever is there, she screams because there are two large adults, as she would say, standing at the back door trying to force open what the door. What the fuck? And so when she screams, these two strangers, they hear it, they turn around and they run. And Melinda, she was upstairs, she hears her daughter screaming, she comes flying downstairs, she's trying to figure out what's going on, Anna is hysterical, the baby's crying, and so Melinda actually calls the police about what her daughter has just seen. The police come out, they search the property, they can't find anyone, and so again, the police leave and they tell the family, look, you know... I'm so imagine she didn't, I mean, it must be a really weird situation because you don't know, and maybe if she didn't scream, they would have kept doing it and broken in, but... Maybe that, like, just try and call the police, and whilst this is going on, try and sneak upstairs, get in the room, just call the police, or if you've got a gun or whatever, I don't know, just do so, or just like, do something that you f wouldn't scare them away, and tr I don't know why getting a gun wouldn't scare them away, but like, just try and keep uh, out of it, wait for the police to come, and then just, tr like, I don't know, like, I don't know, man, I can't say this as if I would know what to do in this situation either to be honest but it's just it's just like don't try and get their attention i'm sorry <laughs> this is happening to you but we can't do anything so please just let us know if anything else happens and we'll be out here as soon as we can you know we're bound to catch these people but you know right now we just don't have much to operate on the following month which was september one of melinda's car keys <laughs> would go missing and whoever had these keys, whoever had stolen these keys, would use it to randomly start Melinda's car in the middle of the night. And they what also used the it to fuck? set off her car alarm at odd hours of the night. And then also during this time frame that her keys were missing, they also discovered that there were nails jammed into the tires of Bruce's car. And so, of course, you know, the family calls the police and tells them about what's going on, but the police can't do anything. And so very frustrated, Melinda actually takes to Facebook and posts that someone... Whoever still has my stolen keys is playing with the remote at 4 30 a.m. God damn. She's stolen her keys and please just give them back. That's not and scary just overall, she's room. pleading with whoever is harassing her family to just leave them alone. But unfortunately, this post would not do anything. The harassment would continue. A month later, on October 19th, Jeff was home alone when he heard the sound of the back sliding glass door rattling. And now he knows that every time this has been heard by Anna, that there's always some stranger at the back door. And so Jeff grabs the family dog and he very carefully turns and looks down that hallway towards the back door to see who this is. And right as he pokes his head out, he sees there's this large adult figure with a hood up <laughs> trying to open this back door. And bitches. so the dog sees this person and starts barking and running towards the door. Jeff runs after the dog and this big person outside who's trying to break in. He sees the dog, he sees Jeff running and he turns and he runs away. And so Jeff and the dog, they stay inside the house and they watch this guy just take off across the property and disappear into the trees. And Jeff would call the police, but not like always the police oh, came out man. and there just was nothing they could do. Four days later on October 23rd, Jeff along with his young daughter and Bruce, they went to the local Applebee's where Anna worked to have dinner there and have Anna wait on them. And then after they were done eating, they said their goodbyes to Anna, they left the restaurant, they hopped in their cars and they drove back to their house. When they got there, Bruce was the first up the steps and he got to the front door and it was locked and so he knocked and Kyle, his son, he came and unlocked the door. Bruce went inside, followed closely behind by Jeff who was holding his daughter. They get inside and Bruce walks through the house to the back of the house where the kitchen is. He flips on the lights and there's something on the kitchen floor. And when Jeff sees it, he immediately turns around and runs out of the house carrying his daughter. He grabs Kyle along the way and just takes them straight out of the house. And then once Jeff was outside, he called 911. And when you listen to his 911 call, it sounds like Jeff is unable to process what he has just seen. 911, what's the address of your emergency? Uh, somebody, somebody's been attacked in my house. Somebody's been what? Attacked. They attacked who? Who was attacked? Uh, uh, Mel Pluskovic. Mel Pluskovic was attacked. He was attacked by whom? Do you know? She, she was 
No, we, we just came home. She's on the kitchen floor. Jeff and Bruce had just discovered Melinda lying on the kitchen floor. She'd been stabbed over 35 oh times. Oh, my God. Three man. times. She would be rushed to the hospital, but she would die that night. Oh. Although the family was in shock and couldn't even begin to process what had just happened, they were all acutely aware that whoever had done this to Melinda had to be connected to all of these strange and suspicious people that had been lurking around their property for the better part of two years. Two In fact, years. literally after Jeff had called 911, Bruce was inside in the kitchen kneeling next to his dying wife and he called 911 and he would tell the dispatcher that the Strongsville Police Department really dropped the ball. 911, what city is the emergency in? Please come to one for blazing star. I think my wife's dead. Someone tell me. We've tell had me people breaking into our fucking house. Sir. And now someone fucking killed her. Sir, tell me the city you need to talk to. Strongsville, Ohio. Okay, you need to be transferred. Don't hang up. 911, what's the city of your emergency? Strongsville, Ohio. We have people on the way already. What's the address? Four blazing star. I think someone killed my wife. You think someone killed your wife? Yeah, there it looks like okay, she has stab wounds on her back. We've had okay. people trying to break into our house sir, all year. Sir, I need to, sir, I need to ask you questions, okay? Are you there right now? I just got in the door with my new son-in-law. My son Kyle was here Okay, what, her. sir, what I want you to do is walk outside. The Strongsville Police Department would come out in force for this case and they would solve it in just four days. What? And when they went public with who killed Melinda, no one could believe it. Back don't on say on. it's the stepson or whatever, man. Don't, don't you even do that, man. I bet this, because they, they hadn't had any of this going on before the stepson was there. He moves in, now they're having all these issues. Oh, no. I think I might have cracked the case, mate. Shit. October 23rd, so this was the night Melinda was discovered. Jeff, along with his young daughter and Melinda and her son Kyle, they were all together in the house. And at some point, Jeff had put his daughter down in her playpen and then went into the kitchen where Melinda was. And he walked up to her, pulled out a knife and stabbed her over 35 times. And then when Melinda fell to the ground, Jeff drew a gun and shot her three additional times to make sure she was dead. Now, while he was doing this, his daughter is literally just a few feet away, and Kyle, presumably, is also right nearby. But he has no way of understanding what's happening to his mother. And so with these two totally innocent lives just right nearby, Jeff would clean off his weapons, and he'd take off his bloody clothes, and he would hide them inside. What an absolutely horrible, ugly fucking rat of a man. Oh, this is an evil motherfucker, man. I bet everyone coming to this house, they were like his friends or what, man. I don't know how we're going to have to see. His car, and then he would just scoop up his daughter and he would leave the house, leaving Kyle alone in the house with his dying mother in the kitchen, just leaves him there, shuts the door, locks it, and then Jeff and his daughter would drive to Applebee's to have dinner with Melinda's husband and her daughter. And then after several hours, when they got back to the property, Jeff knew what was waiting for them inside, and he still allowed Bruce to go inside first and discover his dying wife on the kitchen floor. Very little is known about why Jeff did this, because Jeff has actually never come out and given his motive for the crime. The running theory is that Jeff actually was not going to be able to pay for the wedding, which was coming up in a couple of days. And the wedding venue had actually contacted Melinda and said, hey, you know, we're canceling the wedding because your future son-in-law can't pay for it. And so Melinda apparently confronted Jeff about his financial troubles. And the theory is he snapped and killed her. What However, that can't yeah, that possibly can't. be. Because they've been coming for years. And you know for a fact he was the one like, causing that to happen the entire story for why he did this because it would turn out jeff was found to be responsible for literally every single suspicious event wow. that had taken place around the pleskovic property leading up to the attack well, meaning fuck. every time they had seen strangers lurking around their property or people trying to break into their house 
that had been because of Jeff. Either it was literally Jeff outside being one of these suspicious people, or he had asked friends or hired someone or groups of people to pretend to be suspicious people on the property, or Jeff had been the only person to see these suspicious people, and then miraculously, when other people attempted to look outside, you know, they were gone. And so obviously Jeff was lying. And so I actually had the opportunity to speak with one of Jeff's childhood friends who was actually living roughly in the oh, Strongsville shit. area when this horrible murder took place. And what this person told me is that what is kind of generally accepted <laughs> as why Jeff did this, according to the people in Strongsville, is that Jeff apparently loathed Melinda. Even though she had opened her house to him, he loathed her. And as soon as he moved in in 2016, he began plotting to kill her. And so all of these suspicious events were Jeff's attempt at building this really intricate alibi that they had these strangers out there that were targeting this family. And so that when she would ultimately be killed by him, it would look like these strangers had done it. And at first, it totally worked. Everybody believed, the police, the family, friends, that strangers had broken into the house and killed Melinda. In fact, there was so little suspicion on Jeff after her murder that Jeff actually served as a pallbearer in Melinda's funeral. But ultimately, the police would discover the knife and some bloody clothes in the back of Jeff's car, and so they would arrest him, and they would present this mountain of evidence against him, and Jeff would confess to killing Melinda. However, he wouldn't give any additional information about the crime. He would just basically say, yes, I did kill her. He would also never give an apology or explanation to the family. He would ultimately be sentenced to life in prison with the opportunity for parole after 33 years. During Jeff's trial, there was this totally heartbreaking moment when Bruce, Melinda's husband, spoke. And he... Bro, imagine this is your mum or this is your son-in-law. You've lived together for years. You probably got on or you thought you got on. You had no suspicion. And then you've just... He's just... Treated like that. Treated like, treated you like that after you've opened your arms to him, let him in your home, offered to help, help, offered to help them take care, offered to help them by taking care of their child, all this kind of stuff, everything someone would want, and you've still got the cheek to do something like this. Like you are so fucking evil. Fuck, man. He would say their son Kyle does not understand that his mother is gone. And so now Poor every kid, time man. they go out to eat, which is something Kyle really likes to do and he used to love doing with his mother, he'll just sit and stare out the window eagerly expecting his mother to show up any minute. That's but so of course, she never does. So that's gonna do it guys. If you got something out of today's episode and you haven't done this already, please offer to curl the like button's hair for their wedding, Fuck. but then repeatedly touch the top of their ear with the curling iron. Also, please subscribe to our channel and turn on all notifications so you don't miss any of our weekly one or two video uploads. We are now selling merchandise like flannels and hats and sweat. Holy shit, man, this one is nuts. Bruh, this is blowing my mind. Let's be honest, we never, we never knew what, what we were a fan of strange we never knew that we were a fan of strange dark and mysterious delivered in story format until we found this channel that's very true but yeah man this one was absolutely insane i mean all his stories will blow my mind but there's loads that i haven't seen yet that i know will make before the exact same way but i'm telling you now this is just absolutely insane how someone could be so twisted to do something like this oh man yeah, that's just the reaction. Um, like I said, go check his um, video out, obviously, because it's a new post. And obviously, maybe if you see my reaction first, you wouldn't have seen his. So go, obviously, go give him a view. Go give his video a like, etc. But yeah, man, more on the way. Suggest what you want to see next time. And yeah, until next time, like, subscribe. Peace.